Hello friends, foes, other watchers on the internet, my name is Matt, this is Tim, and you're watching Hogwash Gaming. And I've got Tim along because he knows how to play a game that I've played before but I don't know all the rules to. So uh, we're going to learn how to play Cornhole. So what's the first thing we need, Tim? First thing we need is we need two regulation size Cornhole boards, and we're also going to need a set of eight Cornhole bags. Okay, well, let's go get them set up. All right, so we've set up our boards. Now, what do we do from here? How does the game start? Well, the game starts, uh, you can either play one-on-one, uh, -on -one, okay. like we were gonna do today, or yep. you can play uh, in, in doubles, in pairs. So, uh, when you are playing against an opponent, you stand at the same board on opposite sides. You're not at opposite boards. So, you'd get on the other side of the board. And, uh, we flip a coin or whatever, figure out who's going to throw first. And essentially, we're going to take turns throwing. Okay. You uh, will take one color of bags. All right. I will take the other. Cool. I can find it. There we go. So, the rest of yours. Awesome. So the way it works is a bag on the board is one point. Right. The bag in the hole is three points. But there's a catch. First, though, let's uh, let's throw around and. We'll score it up after that. Cool. So uh, that was our first attempt at uh, the round, and it looks like uh, Red has more points. So what happened here? So the important thing to keep in mind when scoring a cornhole game is that in each individual round, like we just played, only one team can score. The way scoring works, as I mentioned, one point per bag on the board, three per bag in the hole. Matt's got one on the board, and I've got three on the board. So we'll subtract Matt's one from my three, and I end up with two points this round. Okay, now uh, when I was throwing, I had that one that bounced off the ground. That's right. Why is it off now? Because only a bag that lands directly on the board from the throw is considered valid. If it were, say, uh, a bag on the board can influence the way the rest of the game goes. So if there's a bag back here, it can keep mine from sliding off. Or if there's a bag here, it might keep mine from sliding into the hole that bag is on the board invalidly then that's a point in the other per then that would be a benefit in the other person's favor that they shouldn't have so you have to remove a foul bag in the middle of play right when it happens or else it can mess the rest of the game up all right so in the end you had how many points two points two points you had one on the board i had three so that ends up me with two all right and what are we playing for Playing a 21, two, one. <laughs> That's 21. how that works, okay, cool. <laughs> so, two questions, uh, does loser go first? Winner goes first. Oh, of course he does. And um, do I stand on the same side every time? Uh, yes, and this game is particularly handy because I'm a lefty and you're a righty. So we're both being able to stand with our dominant hand being in line with the other board. Okay. It doesn't always happen that way, but uh, today things are hunky-dory. Right. Well, uh, round two, go ahead. Yeah, I'll press my advantage here. So in the event, that I throw a bag and it lands, say, on the board, doesn't hit the grass first, but it lands, say, something like this. What do you do? Well, if you really, really, really can't tell where it primarily is, on the board or up, touching the ground, you'll lift up the board as evenly as possible. Oh, and if the bag starts to fall off like that, you know that point's gone. You don't get it. All right. 
So I got two points this time. That's right. Yeah. So uh, real quick, what are the rules as far as like where you can throw the, the bags from? Great question. Your uh, foot can't cross the plane of the front of the board. Cool. So anywhere behind that line. All right, I'm gonna have to look through this footage and make sure I didn't do that. <laughs> we're a fair way into this game. It's nine to two. That's right. Hey, the angel kitty's back. Uh, he doesn't want to hang out. Okay, cool. Well, um, all right. So, yeah. What what is what is busting then? Busting. Busting is a fun house rule that goes along with this game. Official cornhole rules are the game is over once one player hits or exceeds 21 points. Busting is when you get any score over 21. What happens is you don't win and you go back to 15 as your score, or oh. 13, and house rules decide what score you go back to after you bust. Right. But you want to be very strategic about how you're scoring points then in the latter point of the game. You don't want to be chucking cornholes if all you need are single points to get yourself up to 21. Right, right. Well, we haven't gotten a cornhole yet. No, so we don't have to worry about that Right. at all. So uh, let's just uh, get back to it.
thank you, Tim, for showing me how to play. Now, um, we played a little differently. We played with the bus rule. Yes. Um, so, in legal tournaments, you just go and whoever gets to 21 first wins. Right. Gets 221, exceeds 21, doesn't matter as long as they cross that threshold, they win. Right. Cool. Um, anything else we need to know about? There's the... What? You were telling me something about um, 11 points? Yes. So, skunking is what happens when one team reaches 11 points before the other team scores any points at all. Okay, so I just barely slipped by skunking. You did. If I get 11 points... Let's switch it around. If you get 11 points... <laughs> if... While I only have zero, then I'm gone. And he wins the game. Yeah. If you're playing with skunk rules. Again, that's another house rule kind of thing. Right. I don't know if the ACO or ACA or other accredited organizations play with those rules. Cool. Yeah. Um, so, we played 27 feet approximately mm -hmm. apart. That's, mm -hmm. the, that's the rules. And for kids, you said it was probably 20? 20? 20, 20, 21. Okay. Um, the length between the front of the board and the hole is 3 feet. Right. So if you move both boards one hole's length closer, then you end up with 21. Cool. And presumably that's why it's easier to do. You just scoot the boards up front, both of them a little bit, and you've got a kid's version ready. Cool. And where does the name cornhole come from? The name cornhole comes from uh, what they used to use to fill the bags. They used to fill them with corn, uh, dried corn. Okay. And uh, so they called it So cornhole. it's a hole that you throw corn into, so it might as well be... A cornhole. Cornhole. Why not? Cool. What else would you call that? I don't know. Does it have any other names? It does have two other names. And uh, both of them are either just not good names or terrible names. Sometimes it is called bags. Mm, no. <laughs> other times it is called beanbag toss. And that's just too literal and it's and, not fun. And that's not a fun name. And it's not correct because they're corn. Well, that's true. They're also corn, so, so it's not even correct in that regard. Okay. Although mine, if we were calling it by a very literal name, ours would be like silicon disc hole <laughs> because my bags are filled with like silicon discs. <laughs> Which sounds a little more like a space alien kind of thing. Than it I... does. Maybe like a cyberpunk strategy <laughs> game or something. <laughs> silicon disc hole. <laughs> the hole just throws it off. Yeah, it does. It doesn't work anymore. The slot, maybe. I don't know. Yeah. Anyway, thanks for watching, and uh, thank you, Tim, for coming over and showing me how to play. My pleasure. And kicking my rear. Well, it's been a long time coming, both of those things. Yeah. Until next time, this is Hogwash, over and out. Catch you later.